Howdy y'all, I'm Fran with the developer relations team here at WP Engine. In today's video walkthrough, I'm gonna teach y'all how to set up search engine optimization in headless WordPress with Yoast SEO, Next.js, and WP GraphQL. So let's get stoked y'all and dive right in. Now before getting into the Yoast SEO plugin itself, let's quickly go over what SEO is and its importance. So search engine optimization, or SEO for short, is the practice of orienting your website to rank higher on search engine results pages, or SERPs for short, so that you receive more traffic. Now the aim is typically to rank on the first page of Google results for search terms that mean the most to your target audience. Yoast SEO is a WordPress plugin that improves your website rankings on search engines by helping you optimize your site's content and keywords. A lot of what Yoast SEO does is automated, such as analyzing a page's content and providing suggestions on how to improve it. The plugin gives you a score, tells you what problems there are and how to improve your content for SEO. But there are things that you still need your input in, such as key phrases and meta descriptions. I'll dive right into the video as we go along in the video for that. In this section, let's go over installing it and extending it with WP GraphQL. Now, if I go over to my WordPress admin here, I'm gonna to navigate towards this plugins option on the left-hand side of the menu. And I've already installed the plugins, but there's three plugins that you're gonna need in order to follow with this video and make it work. So the first one is, WP GraphQL, so if we go over to add new, and we go into the directory of the plugins for WordPress here, let's type in WP GraphQL. And there it is, WP GraphQL. Then right away on the left, you see WP GraphQL Yoast SEO add-on. And then of course, the last one is Yoast SEO. And there's that. And as I said, I've already downloaded all of them, so you can see that right here. Okay, we have everything we need plugin-wise to make this all work. Now, the next thing we need to do before we start editing it in post and seeing what Yoast can do is to ensure that we don't forget within our settings option here on the menu, go into general, and in order for that front end to reflect the URLs, um, we need to put that in the site address option here where it says site address URL. In this case, this is off local host 3000, which is the development server that Next.js spins off off this port. So I've already done that here, but whatever front end URL you're gonna have if you choose to do this and follow along, you're gonna implement it here. Now let's go over to the posts type and click on an individual post to edit it to make sure that Yoast is doing what it's supposed to do. So if I go over to post here, click on this, and then let's get into the edit interface and block editor of WordPress. If I scroll all the way down to the page, I will see an option for Yoast SEO down there. And then I will see that there's the Yoast emblem right here. So the plugin is on and it's working. When I click on this here, and reveal what it can do, here is the features that it enables you. It reveals tools such as adding a meta description, canonical URL, breadcrumbs, titles, etc. Now there are lots of features to increase and boost your SEO. For this quick tutorial, we're gonna focus on exposing the meta and full head of that HTML. So in the post, in order for web crawlers to better find and index the page. So the next step that we need to do is head over to the WP GraphQL and Graphical IDE Editor to check out the SEO field. So let's do that. Head over to the GraphQL menu on the left side and then click on Graphical IDE. Now, the WP GraphQL for Yoast extension makes it real easy and seamless to expose and query for the SEO data in the WordPress WP GraphQL schema. A SEO field is exposed, as you can see here, in the graphical IDE, and you can ask specifically for what SEO data you want back. 
So when I hit the Query Composer here, and you can start dropping down and selecting what data you want to call back, the SEO is exposed. And I've already populated this with a query. <clears throat> And the uh, variable right here is the slug. So when I hit play, I am asking in this case for a single post detail by its slug. And then I'm grabbing its meta description, title, and full head of that SEO. So when I hit play, I should get that back. And let's try it. Awesome. Now I'm super stoked because as you scroll down here, you can see the SEO data coming back. All right. So now that we have that all set up with our backend and WP GraphQL and extension for Yoast SEO, let's go over to the front end now in our Next.js project and consume that on our front end. Now that we have our WordPress install transformed into a WP GraphQL server with the SEO extension to expose the metadata, the next step is to use Next.js as our front-end application to consume that data and turn it into the HTML and improve the way the search engine indexes our site. So I'm going to use my Next.js demo starter, and I'll leave a link to the GitHub repo if you want to clone it down and follow it along, or you can use your own project. So I'm in my terminal right now, and I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. And within this directory of the pages folder, I'm going to go to the slug.js file, which is the dynamic route file for the single posts detail pages. And then I'm going to scroll down to my get static props function. Now let's focus on this for a while. So. What's going on here is I am have this get static props function, and in the query, I'm grabbing individual posts with its related data. Now the SEO metadata description, full head and title are also being pulled right here. Now, now that our SEO is being requested and coming through, I need to show it on our variable in Next.js and destructure it up here so we can add it to our JSX. So that is what I'm doing up here. I'm destructuring the SEO properties into the post and then adding it to my JSX within the head tag of Next.js and Next head component allows us to do this. So now if we go back to the browser, we should see this SEO data come through in the elements. So let's do that. Let me jump to a browser here. I'm in my page on my dynamic uh, post detail page here. So let me open up the dev tools. Okay. And let's make sure everybody can see this clearly. Whoops. So if I click on the head tag here, there it is. I'm getting all the SEO data that I've requested within my JavaScript extended. So it's working. Stoked. The next thing to think about is what if we want to manage the entire head easier with the full head field within the WP GraphQL schema? The issue here is, is that the next head component does not support React dangerously set inner HTML convention. So in order to alleviate the issue, we can use the HTML React parser package. So I've already done this, but you can do so if you go back to your terminal and run the command npm install HTML React parser dash dash save. Now I already done this. Now once installed, let's go back into our code. And I'm just going to copy the snippet here from my blog post. And then what's going on here is at the top of the file, we're importing the parse from HTML React parser, as you can see. 
Then we set a const up to call it the full head and transform it into React. Now, once that is done, we simply add the JSX within the head tag, grabbing the full head and data in one object here. So going back to Terminal, let's run it locally and see the entire full head showing with all the metadata and canonical URLs. Clear this out. Let me start up the development server again. npm run dev. Let's open the browser. Navigate over to our single post detail page. Open up the elements. Open up the head tag, and we can see, yes, it's pulling everything, the URL that we replaced, and all the metadata that the head tag is using with the HTML React parser. Now, this is working in the dev environment in our Node app, and I'm super stoked about it, but let's make sure this works on a hosting platform. Let's use Atlas, the headless WordPress hosting platform, to test this out. So navigating here over to my Atlas accounts, this one is the buddy run right here. I'm gonna click that. Okay. And let's go ahead and hit the head page. And there it is, working on WP Engine's Atlas. Woo! I hope you found this video helpful because in conclusion, SEO is an important part of your site's discoverability when it comes to Google and other search engines indexing your site and ranking them high. It makes your website more visible and that means more traffic. With tools like WP GraphQL, Yoast SEO, Next.js and Atlas to host, this is made much more easier and seamless for the developer as you saw. Now we just covered the basics of what SEO can do with WP GraphQL. There are a lot more features and options you can do, and I would love to hear about them in our Discord channel, so hop right in. And if you have not used the Atlas platform and are interested, please check the links I leave to get a free Sandbox Dev account. Until next time, happy coding.